Hi, I'm Susan Evans from SusanEvans.org and today I'm going to be starting a series of blog posts about Earth and Space. Um, and so if you have this book, Earth and Space by Bright Ideas Press, you will want to go to my blog to see how we are actually doing it. So I'm going to show you a lot of hands-on activities in videos and in blog posts and in pictures on how we um, are doing uh, Earth and Space. And I'm calling this a unit study, even though it's a full year. If you do it twice a week, it's a full year for homeschoolers. And so, um, and it has lots of, um, lots of uh, pages that have diagrams and printables and things like that uh, for not only hands-on things, but also notebooking things. So, during the first two chapters, what we've done, uh, the first chapter is on creation, and they have a really cool coloring page, uh, which my kids uh, colored. And uh, this coloring page, uh, what we did was uh, we glued it onto black cardstock paper, okay? Glued it onto that, and then we used a silver Sharpie marker to make the uh, title. And so we just slip that into a binder. And it depends how much you're going to do, uh, and if you're going to, uh, you, you might need a, a larger binder. We might upgrade to a larger binder as we go. And what I usually do is I print out the printables on a white cardstock paper because it's more sturdy. Okay, and so that first day when we were talking about the earth, uh, the continents and oceans and things like that. Uh, they were able to color that. We found the equator uh, and we looked at the earth as it is in space. And so, um, so take a look at uh, one of the activities we did for chapter two, which is the earth um, uh, revolving and rotating around the sun. Take a look at that hilarious activity. For this activity, you will want to put a chair in the center of the room to represent the sun. If you have an extra kid who wants to be the sun, you can grab a yellow piece of construction paper or cardstock paper, draw a bright sun on it, um, and we put uh, a string around um, the, the um, hole punched holes of the top of the paper to represent the sun. Uh, and of course he needs to wear sunglasses to represent the sun because he's cool. Yep. Okay. Uh, so now we have an earth. Uh, say hello earth. Okay. Okay. Now the earth is going to go around the sun. So walk around the chair in a circle. You are revolving around that chair. It's called revolving. Okay, now uh, stop where you were there. Okay, now face the chair. The front of your body is having daytime and then um, face away from the chair. Okay, now you are nighttime. Okay, so now uh, face the chair again. Slowly spin in place. You are rotating. As you spin, notice where your body is facing. Okay, so you're facing, this is day, night, day, night, day, like that. Okay, so we understand that daytime is when you're facing the sun and nighttime is when you're facing away from the sun. Now, try to uh, spin, which is rotating, while revolving around the chair. Okay, so this is how the earth moves around the sun. <laughs> it's very interesting. Now, just for kicks, let us add a moon. The moon goes around <laughs> the earth while the earth <laughs> is revolving <laughs> and while the earth <laughs> is rotating around the sun. Okay, as you can see, <laughs> this is a quite funny activity. <laughs> Take a bow, everyone. <laughs> Take a bow. Then we took a look at the inside of the Earth. So once you look at the outside, the continents and oceans, and what it looks like as it's in outer space, okay, then you look at the inside of the Earth and what's, what it's made of. And so uh, you have this diagram that's provided in the book, and um, it has all these different layers. And what we did is we made these layers out of clay, 
Um, and actually, it would be way easier to do it with Play-Doh because Play-Doh is a lot softer. So um, I recommend using Play-Doh instead of clay. Um, as you can see in uh, this video clip coming up, uh, we had a hard time um, cutting it with the dental floss. Uh, because it was kind of a little bit tough, but it still worked. It's still gorgeous. Uh, so take a look at our clay structure of the earth. We are making a clay uh, structure of the earth. Okay, so um, it says to, to make a one inch ball, but because we don't have that much clay, we're going to do it on a smaller scale. Okay, so we have about maybe half an inch for our core, our inner core. Then we have an outer core, which is going to be yellow. So we flattened our pieces, and now we are putting those um, around here and on the edges like that. And we're trying not to, uh, don't mash it too much because we want the clear delineation of the um, of the yellow okay also make sure that the clay is not super dry you can also do this with play-doh okay and just kind of mush it like this okay so and mush it and actually you can write like this with your finger kind of uh, go across it like that until you mash it down. So the yellow needs to be, um, we use two sticks, two whole sticks of yellow, okay? And we only used um, probably one fourth of the stick of the red because it's proportionately uh, so much larger for the outer core than the inner core, okay? So once that's done, you try to make it as smooth as you can, okay, like that. All right, now we are doing orange. So my Rachel has been flattening the orange for me. See, if it's a blanket, see I could go all the way around. It looks like we need more orange, but we're gonna make this, um, make it go around. We're just gonna go like this and we're gonna push it so that it wraps around like a present okay see how I'm doing that all right now that is the lower mantle and it won't be quite proportionate okay so you should you, you should get more um, orange or you can um, mix the oranges together into um, each other so that you have more orange if you haven't got enough like me okay so that's that. Then there's another layer, but I don't want to make it um, red, so we're going to make that purple. And it looks like we need, we need way more purple. Can you flatten that out for me? Okay, so you just flatten out these things, and um, you just put it on there. All right. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it go upward and outward a little bit so that when we use the other one, we'll just flatten that as well, okay? So we're gonna get um, the purple to cover the entire ball. The final layer is the crust, and you can do that brown if you want to. I'm going to do it blue because I wanna do blue and green uh, for uh, the world, okay, to represent the oceans and to represent the land. And so I'm gonna do the same I did with purple, which is um, let one smashed one go all the way around and then kind of stretch it out on the sides, okay? Stretch it out on the sides, make it go as far as it can, all right? And if you have a slightly different blue, that's fine, nobody cares. We're just doing a model, okay? And, um, and one other tip in, uh, in do, working with clay is you want to put something under it like wax paper, but really a, um, a placemat that the is... bottom of a placemat. A placemat that is laminated is better than wax paper because it won't come up and it won't be annoying in any way. Okay? It's not noisy. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to finish covering this with all the water and then what you do is you look at a map and then you carve out with um, green, you, you flatten the green and you carve out the continents as best you can. It doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be perfect, just a blob, right? Okay, and then you put the, um, the green on top of that water. So you just mash it down so you can see the earth, okay? So now we are going to, uh, if you wanna cut it with a knife, you can. We're gonna cut it with um, dental floss, like the instructions say, to get a smoother cut all the way through, okay? So dental floss is kind of hard to use, but so it looks like you need to stand up at the top and um, and then push it down all the way through it. Oh, could I try? Okay, if you have Play-Doh, this would work so much better, okay? Because, there we go, there we go. All right, so. All right. <coughs> Yeah, if you have um, if you have clay, down, then if, you have, if you have clay, it is oh, it's gorgeous, guys! It is absolutely gorgeous. Take a look inside the earth. Isn't that fabulous? Look at that. But there you have the layers of the earth. You have the inner core right there. You have the inner core. You have the outer core. Okay. You have the lower mantle, upper mantle, and then the crust along the top that needs to be a bit or the water. thinner. Yeah. Or the water. So there you have it, a clay earth. Another one of the activities that's recommended is to um, do another ball of clay, just one color, it doesn't matter what color, and stab a toothpick through it. So that toothpick is the axis of the earth, and here we are, the earth is rotating. So you wanna slightly tilt it, and then spin it, and that is the rotation of the earth day and night. One of the other activities that's super, super easy is um, earth's structure. It has um, all these uh, circles, these five circles to represent the different um, layers of the earth. And so what you do is you color those circles and glue them one on top of the other to show the layers of the earth. This is what it looks like when it's finished, okay? And then we drew an earth on the other side, okay? So we left a little bit of white and, and you just kind of outlined the continents, all right? So it's pretty cool. Outside of the earth, inside of the earth. Here are some of the other examples, okay? And my son wanted to make a stem out of them and so he cut out different um, uh, colors and then glued them on top of each other and then he glued some uh, green construction paper on top of blue uh, for the back so that's an alternate way that you can do this particular activity so um, I'm Susan Evans from SusanEvans.org. If you want to know more about Earth and space, there are a lot of uh, blog posts and videos and fun pictures coming up on my blog, SusanEvans.org forward slash blog, and they will all be tagged Earth and space. Uh, and, and this was actually um, a, a good uh, answer to prayer because uh, one of my sons wanted to study the weather, he wanted to study outer space, and he wanted to study rocks and minerals. And I had no idea that there was a book that taught all, uh, all three of those and that had tons of hands-on learning, just like uh, on my website you have all hands-on learning. So um, I'm Susan Evans, thanks for watching.